What are you doing today? <laughs> Some break test. This is my first time, guys. This is fun! So, we are in Iceland. This is Flauajökull Glacier. And we just hiked 45 minutes from the car. And we're gonna do brake tests today on ice crews. Glacier ice is a little bit different than waterfall ice. It's a lot older. This ice is several hundred years old. And uh, the grain structure might be slightly different. Waterfall ice forms vertically, gravity pulling it vertically. So it forms in that orientation. Snow packs into ice in the glaciers and it uh, forms over much longer time frames. What do you guys think of this block ice? It's locked, it's not going anywhere. Let's see if we can build an anchor right here and then we'll figure out what we want to break test first. So we've evaluated how and what we're gonna pull because we have sun crust, crusted ice here, but we've got some clean blue ice under here, which is gonna be, I guess, our strongest ice, if I'm not mistaken. It's also pretty cool when it's clear where you're able to see either the ice screw in there or the V-thread in there. And we want to pull most of the tests today in shear. I mean, that's the way most people are using this stuff. We might, if we can, pull some stuff in tension because occasionally that can happen. If we stick the tests in the ceiling here, then we can pull or attach the pulley system to this V-thread we can just put in this chunk of ice here, which is actually really easy to drill, especially with the big drill that we have. Connect the pulleys. There's not much of a distance there. We can, might even connect the pulleys directly to the line scale. And then we can all just walk on this mostly flat area uh, pulling the rope. We might sit and pull with the cinders and um, that way we don't fall fall. We just kind of fall backwards a little while we're already sitting. So let's uh, set it all up and see if this goes the way I hope. Hey. Well, go in, go in a couple of like metric units of this. Not more that way. Terry, get your holes to line up, isn't it? How did Ryan die? Oh. Moving the drill bit. Are we certain this is strong enough? A hundred percent. We'll find out, huh? We will test out the theory. All right. So let's do it. Let's do some science. So what we did here is we have a span set that fits in this giant hole from the giant drill bit. And I have this red, um, I think, Technora or Kevlar 12 braids ropes just a, a bundle of it here. But instead of going into like a triangle, uh, put a little bit more force on this than I wanted. We just kind of did a sliding X. And so it's actually pulling, it would have to break a lot before this comes off. So let's Seven. do eight threads. Yeah. All right, eight threads. But this would recreate something for like waterfall ice when you could only put in a stubby and only maybe tie it off. So I'm pushing the ash curve and turning it. And then you really need to be careful. It's kind of grabbing. Now the teeth are, in and I can let it go. You have to be careful if it's like, you know, loose still. If you let it go, you might drop your screw. But it's in there and now I do a few more turns with my whole hand and once it's kind of, let's say, two, three threads in, you open the handle and you can spin it like this. Does it always poop ice? Yes. Well, sometimes it poops air if the ice is air in it. <laughs> That's not good ice. All right, so we're testing this ice screw there. It's quite shallow because sometimes you might encounter thin ice when you waterfall ice climbing. Oh, that's so anticlimactic. Would yeah. not whip. Would not whip. That, 
That would hold body weight. Mental protection. But you also clipped the uh, the hanger. hanger. I I said oh, two. Okay. What'd you say? I said three. You said three. So we're both we're both super right enough. Two point two six. So should we do that again with with uh, the tile? Yeah. I really like this. Actually, that worked perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've never belayed uh, this. Oh yeah. But it's a moving target. Maybe this isn't stretchy, but like when we do the V threads, it will be. So now we tied off the screw. We're still working on thin ice, you know, even though. We have ice here. <laughs> the we're thickest imagining, ice ever. <laughs> we're imagining this is the thin ice. So now we tied off the screw to try to reduce the leverage. And we're going to see what's going to happen now. Do you Let's still see. have about eight screws in the same amount? Yeah, yeah, it's about the same. Okay. But uh, what could happen, you know, this thing might go directly down to the bottom of the screw once we start pulling. But let's see. Six point nine eight for the tie off. Okay, that's good for it. It didn't slip. You thought it was gonna slip, right? Here, like we we made a much more sheer. Like there was a cone that discharged. Ah, uh, coned out. Yeah. But here we broke the threads. This is the optimal angle, basically, according to tests from Petzl and lots of other people. But that's in a wall you're yeah. temporarily using yeah. to temporary lead climb. Yeah. If you're top roping clients all day, yeah, you're gonna want to put them in just straight in, in case they would need to pull against the top of that glacier. Yeah, and I have heard of some guides doing it like, so it actually creates more leverage. So like, you know, pull it, pull it this ten, way. 10 degrees that way. Yeah, just to have more leverage. So because if the threads melt out, at least you still have the lever pulling against the ice. So that's our tension halfway. One, two, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Oh, oh. 3.96. Double of the first one. Nice. So clove hitching it in shear yeah. is going to be way better. Yeah. yeah. So when you're guiding, just don't put in your screws halfway and you'll be good. Well, we don't unless we're ice climbing, so <laughs> waterfall climbing, which is super rare as well. You have to climb a super sketchy pitch. I've noticed that all ice screws have the same length of thread. Yeah, they all do. And then the shaft is the part that's different. Yep. Is that just to grab good ice that's deeper in? The reach for the sun crust and the shitty stuff. And, and the sun crust is this yep. chunky stuff yeah. instead of this super smooth blue glacial ice. Is that uh, also on a waterfall? Yeah, you can have the same on a waterfall. The surface can be just kind of crusty shit. You're saying there's only one type of ice and this, this answers all the questions. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the 10 or 20 degrees in the wrong direction. Deep in there and then we'll pull until it breaks. Is that an angle? What? Yeah. Well, let's, let's see. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's the snow poop is going down my sleeve. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! That was not very strong. Maybe we should listen to the instruction manual. I mean, you can see it started started breaking the ice in front of it, so it actually didn't rely on the threads, and it started shearing this ice here. So as soon as it breaks a little bit, yeah, and then it would just angle itself out. So I think yeah, the best. And the would threads be, do nothing after that. They don't. Yeah, you could. I mean, you could see the the damage in the front of it here. I was going to say six. Six six. I said six as well. Okay. Well, it, okay, let's, yeah, yeah, let's all say six. six. Four point six five on the on the bad uh, the twenty degrees in the wrong direction. This would be curious with a longer screw. With the leverage. Mike, do you want to put in the uh, straight in? Yeah, yeah, sure. And I, I do think the strongest will probably be angled 10 degrees towards us. I mean, this is, this is how it's taught across the board in the association. Regardless if you're climbing vertical or top rope anchor. It would never, we would never place it. It was always sheer force. Yeah. Like if we do it personally, I, I still only do perpendicular. I never put you're 10 doing degrees toward me. Two in the wall or two on top mm -hmm. and you're top roping. Yeah. yeah. Is time. it just naturally because all around here, your ice is so good it's irrelevant? Whereas okay. waterfall ice has the more aerated. Could be. But you could have aerated crap here. But it's going to be super rare on the terminus. I mean, we're, we're climbing, it's ice that's moved for hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah. And the sun crust, you know, the association at least teaches us to clean the 
surface ice. Yeah, because usually, I mean, we, we modify our anchor setups to always be perpendicular to the ice and the pull. And the pull. So we always have, like, I, I rarely have to deal with situations like this. I would just modify of or what? change my... Like, well, Screwing something two what? meters off the ground and pulling on it with a five to one with all your friends? You well, don't I do mean, that every day? Well, this is something we could figure out. <laughs> it's so fascinating. I think that's what gets me. It's like AS, it really? ice ASMR. Oh, I just fractures. It's already like technically coned. <laughs> Is this your margarita maker? So this guy we're gonna break, eh? Yeah. Let's, Let's see. see. This is a proper screw. It is. This is a proper screw and proper ice. Yeah, this is what we're taught to do. So. One, pull. No, you guys need to slide your cinders forward. Yeah. One, two, three, pull. One, two, three, pull. One, two, three, pull. <laughs> three, pull. <laughs> pull. <laughs> pull. <laughs> wow! That's amazing! I'm more curious about how strong you guys pulled that than the, the result. I mean, the hanger doesn't look bent at all. Yeah. But the screw actually bent. <laughs> yep. Wow, that's interesting. It made me feel better you guys had to pull so hard. Huh. We were really, it was properly hard. And it wasn't angled that much different. Yeah. It just made such a huge difference. What happened to the hole? It completely completely. <laughs> oh, you got conage real bad over here. Wow, that's crazy, huh? Man, that was a nice clean break though. Yeah. And you can see while we were pulling before, there was some ice like drizzling down yeah. before it broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time we yanked on it, there's a little bit of, little of extra motion. Yeah, I mean, there's some breakage here. I think if we do a 10 degrees towards us, we can eliminate some of this, right? Probably. And just get more of the threads. Because here are the threads, there's not much damage here. 16. Oh! <laughs> wow. Yeah. 16, 17. Wow, that's pretty good for a five to one, or what was that, a five to four? All right, so what's your theory on uh, 20 degrees in the correct direction? I would say probably, uh, I think we're gonna go to maybe 20 kilonewtons. Which means, wait, wait, what's the hanger rated for? 10. 10, 10. Yeah. <laughs> so we've already made it past 16, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the hanger, success, black diamond, with <laughs> making this screw, good job. <laughs> Do you think the hanger will break if, we get our, if we're getting into the 20 range? I mean, the hanger didn't even show any stress, right? So this was just a screw. Seeing just how it breaks is almost more important than the number. Let's do 20 degrees in the right direction. This screw is installed properly based on all the manuals I've ever read and what a lot of people are taught. 20 degrees in the direction you're pulling, so the threads are doing the work and it's not the leverage against the ice. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Come on. <laughs> oh my God. That was a five to seven. I mean, it definitely looks straight. So it was probably the threads then. So I think the forces would be higher. Let's yeah. check out the hole. It blew out like this part here. Yeah, we might have been a little bit too close to that screw because you can see how the crack goes over here. Yeah. yeah. What's the recommended yeah. distance between screws? Screw length, 21 centimeters. Yeah. About 20 centimeters. That's, that's more than that. Yeah. That's about exactly 16. What? Wow. <laughs> what? Wow. It did not bend it. No. Interesting. I, I really thought we were going to break some screws. But apparently the screws are just freaking bomber. <laughs> more than the ice. Yeah. I have found I trust gear a lot more than I do rock and ice. Hmm. The more I test stuff in real rock and real ice. And this is good ice. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. isn't shit waterfall ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why don't we do perpendicular 21? Uh, you mean a longer screw? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you're putting the pressure further in. It's not better ice necessarily. You're, you're grabbing deeper ice. Yeah. You're not going to get it to cone. It'll actually break. I think it'll break this. Janice is giving up one of her long screws. We're all pulling our guts out on this one. Yeah. I think the hanger is going to break. The screw is so deep buried inside. There is a lot of ice that is supporting the screw. So the reason it's coming out is because it's coning. It's blowing the ice out. Well, it can't really do that if the threads, which are the same length as everything else we've been testing, is deeper in the ice. This is actually an aluminum hanger as opposed to the steel hanger. This is a Petzl. And pull as hard as you can in three, two, one. Man, you guys are better than hydraulics. I am gonna laugh if it's 16 kilonewtons. Interesting. 
<laughs> Interesting. Fourteen point three two. Really? It was less. The whole benefit of a longer screw is wasted on the aluminum hanger. That's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> is this how you do science? That's how I study. He's like the science man here. But you're compromising the test, man. Yeah. It's the wrong ice. It's the wrong ice. I think it was it's not cold it's enough when you guys are point. doing it. But I can you're assure you it's cold enough. We really want to see if the, we can get the screw to break or the ice to break or the body to break. We don't know. Three, two, one. Ah! Three, two, one. 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 God damn it. Do we have more in us? Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Oh, that's all scratched up. Okay, what else went? Without the fuse, we were pushing the limits of what the screen can do. So 26.34 kilonewtons. I don't know if we had more in us, honestly. I think it's pretty bummer ice screw right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just missing the head. It's funny to me, it's twice as strong as the hanger. It, it right. doesn't wiggle at all. Like yeah, no. I wonder if it's bent though. Uh, this is so bent. It's bent, so that's why it won't it's... unspin. So it's interesting, you know, we're getting less strength out of a full depth screw because the hanger broke. But still, 14 kilometers is plenty enough for ice climbing situations. I think V-threads is the way to go if you're going to do high lines. But even those will go away after a couple days. Oh, uh, what's what's going on over there? Oh, they're waiting for us. They have something interesting to show us. A little bit bent. <laughs> Proper banana. <laughs> something worth noting is this 22 kilonewton sling is known for its abrasion resistance, which is... Uh, kind of nice on a nice screw, the way we're testing it. Went to 26 kilonewtons, and it actually looks like it would pass some inspection. It looks like that was the, the point. That's probably from the teeth before. But it's actually in good shape. So, like, this did not break at 22. Fun fact. So, this is a 13 centimeter ice screw. Earlier, we had it only partially in, in pretty much just orientation. And this is the last test we're going to do. We're going to clip the inner hole because we're going to be pulling it straight out just to see kind of what that does. Typically you clip here so you have that hole available for a second clip. And I think this is only available on the black diamond ice screws. The pestle ones only have the one hole. Stop. Nope. Stop. Nope. Stop. Nope. Really coned. So there's nothing wrong with this. Looks straight still. How much force do you guys think you got? 13.84 straight out. In tension, that's pretty impressive for a short screw. So we did the longest and then like the shortest rated one. I'd rather have a 10 centimeter screw than nothing in thin ice. If this is holding 16, you know how we put it in, it'd probably hold 10. Take a whipper off it all day, baby. <laughs> I mean, you're not supposed to whip anyway on ice. So what conclusions is, can we take away from this? Longer screws have a bigger stress cone and they're stronger, unless the hanger breaks. Well, I learned a lot just how they go in, how they come out, the angles was interesting. I didn't quite believe the 20 degree and the angle you're supposed to be pulling. I don't know, imagine that, they're right. Well, it seems like there's not a huge difference between just putting them straight in 90 degrees or angling them like the right way. But uh, yeah, if you clove hitch a partially installed yeah. thing, it's well, like that, you could almost whip on it. That worked. Your ice screw holding is the biggest concern you have while you fall with two ice axes and crampons and ice screws. <laughs> you don't fall, that's the key. Don't fall. Yeah. So why are we wasting all this time on ice screws <laughs> if you're not supposed to use them? Because uh, it does, does happen. All right. Occasionally. I don't know, the commercial industry, I mean, that's what we use, like this top roping anchor. Yeah, I guess you need an anchor. Because I mean, many people just say this is how it is because. And I think today we try to figure out why it's actually like that, what they're rated to. Yeah. You know, I, so. I found them amazing. These like bolts you just put anywhere without feeling bad. Mm -hmm. And like, then you can access the edge, make your V-threads and high line because that's all I really care about when I'm on a glacier.